Ladies and gentlemen, Bonadigion Bonadigesai, as an honorary fellow of the Institution of Civil Engineers, I am delighted to be invited to recognise the work of the institution and the engineering profession in Wales. Now, yours is a profession which has long been essential to creating and sustaining the conditions for life. It is now also a profession which is at the very front line of the battle to find a sustainable way of living. This is why I am particularly happy to hear that ICE Wales Cymru is addressing the challenge I set in the ICE Halcro lecture last year. In other words, to be concerned not only with how a project might work from a technical point of view, but also how such technology sits within the public realm and how it will affect the communities it touches. I was much heartened by the response to my words on the occasion of that lecture, particularly as the institution had been gracious enough to listen to the words of a non-engineer. So I am greatly encouraged that you have seen fit to invite me to address you on this occasion too. Now, I am sure you will not be surprised if I return, albeit briefly, to some of the points about the importance of working in harmony with nature, which I made at that earlier occasion. In fact, I suspect you might be rather surprised if I did not. I feel emboldened to do this, of course, by the fact that, as you know, your own institution's Royal Charter, granted in 1828, describes civil engineering as the art of directing the great sources of power in nature for the use and convenience of man. So you will understand, I am sure, that I find it mystifying why, despite our having acquired unprecedented technical knowledge, we nonetheless face unprecedented and catastrophic climate change. In fact, I cannot help but wonder whether we have, to use the words of the Royal Charter, use the power of nature for our own ends, without enough regard for the long-term consequences. As I said, I'm, I'm not myself an engineer, except, of course, in the honorary capacity which your institution so kindly bestowed on me. However, as you may know, I have tried, in my own small way, to promote sustainability through, for instance, the work of my Foundation for Building Community, which works to meet the global challenges of urbanization and climate change. You will know better than anyone how much needs to be done. Just as one example, uh, my own recent visits to flood-affected areas in Wales and elsewhere have underlined for me the need for action in the field of sustainable urban drainage, which is becoming an ever more pressing issue and one which my Foundation for Building Community has spent a great deal of time and effort researching and addressing. Perhaps this can serve as an example of how an approach which works in partnership with nature can solve some of our greatest challenges. In visiting those areas affected by floods, in so many cases it seemed clear we had ignored nature's way of alleviating flooding problems and that we have simply not understood well enough how nature herself deals with water. We channel water in centralised systems towards high capacity collection points. We build next to riverbanks. We cut ever deeper channels and pave over more and more areas of our towns and cities. It is sobering to think that in London alone, an area 22 times bigger than Hyde Park has been paved over since the 1970s. And this has happened despite the fact that nature herself does not use such centralised systems, but rather, just like the human body, a multiple network of pathways. It seems rather as if our engineering in the mid-20th century appears to have thought we could do without brooks, streams, rivers, bogs and water meadows, all of which form part of an integrated, harmonious system which serves the balance uh, of the whole. In such a natural system, when a massive, unexpected storm comes, there are plenty of places for the runoff water to go. But with those options closed off or concreted over, it is hardly surprising that our towns and cities suffer sudden 
devastating floods. Thankfully, it does seem recently as though these lessons from nature are gradually being learnt. Wetlands, water meadows and natural storage and drainage systems are, are, are being reintroduced. But so much more remains to be done. This is something my Foundation for Building Community has tried to address, for instance by encouraging the use of sustainable urban drainage systems in a development at Upton near Northampton, where the town plan now features an extensive wetland swale system. Such an answer to drainage problems is not merely practical, but also happens to enhance people's living and working experience. My foundation is currently undertaking a research project with the local residents on how the local green space impacts the community's well-being and biodiversity. It will be um, interesting, I think, to see how the functionality of these engineering systems enhances the natural and social capital of a community and, indeed, the potential financial returns that may be possible when living in a better community environment. Uh, in addition to this research, we are hosting a community event in June of this year in collaboration with the University of Northampton, uh, the local community, primary school, Aviva, Helcro and Micro Drainage, as well as other key partners. I cannot stress this, this enough. Uh, I cannot stress enough the importance of adopting a truly integrated approach, which not only protects human well-being, but improves it. I believe, therefore, that there is great potential for collaboration between my foundation and your great institution, ladies and gentlemen, as we seek to build a sustainable future. And with that future in mind, it is very good to learn of other initiatives being undertaken by the institution in Wales, such as the Bridges to Schools programme and This is Civil Engineering campaign, which promote the importance of civil engineering to society and which attract young people to this most vital profession. I'm also delighted to hear that tonight's project awards, which received an unprecedented number of entries, increasingly seek to recognise projects that best meet that challenge of sustainability. It was excellent news, too, that the Sustainable Futures Commissioner for Wales gave this year's St David's Day lecture and that ICE Wales Cymru is seeking to work more closely with the Climate Change Commission for Wales and with Welsh Government, contributing, for instance, to the development of the Wales Infrastructure Investment Plan. Initiatives of this kind really could not be more vital as we face the unprecedented dangers of climate change and the depletion of natural resources. Over the centuries, civil engineers have bridged gulfs it had seemed could never be crossed, harnessed forces it had seemed could never be controlled, and opened up places it had seemed must be forever inaccessible. The task you now face is even greater, to bridge the gulf between an unsustainable present and a sustainable future to work in harmony with forces we had presumed to control and to open up answers to problems that seem beyond solution. I have no doubt you're equal to the challenge. Uh, and for the sake of future generations, I wish you every possible success. Pob Diminiad Dahi Gidar Gwaith.